Nier Automata really feels like it was a game made for me. When I picked up a PS4 earlier this year, it was one of the first games I got for it. While I didn't know much about it, it was one I was really excited to get into. And as I played more, saw what it was doing, I was blown away. It is an action JRPG, which I think is my favorite genre of game because it combines my love of Japanese storytelling, fast-paced action of the action RPG genre. And Nier really nailed the gameplay with exciting combat, awe-inspiring bosses, and it really just made me feel with the characters as everything unfolded. You also have a story built upon a world of mystery and a lot of big plot twists, so yeah, perfect game for me. But the moment that truly sold me on it was the final battle, which is what I want to talk to you about today. If you don't want spoiled for that, don't watch this video. And yes, the battle I'm referring to is the battle against the credits itself. At the end of the game, or so it appears, the main characters are dead. The world is falling apart and the tragic tale has reached the end. And the pods are about to delete all the data as the credits roll, including that of the main characters. But then the pods decide that, no, they're not going to go along with it. Pod042 even says, I have come to the conclusion that I cannot accept this resolution. This line, it really means so much. It's how the player feels after reaching the tragic end. They want another chance, a way to fight for a happy ending, even if it's risky. And that's just what the game is about to give the player. And I love the voice acting for the pods here. They're robotic, as it should be, but there is just a touch of emotion behind the words and that just works so well. The battle begins and it is against the very credits of the game itself. It plays out like the hacking games that were introduced in Route B and just, it was really different. The fight starts off pretty easy, but there is so much emotion here. You have the pods talking about gaining consciousness, the epic music playing that is slowly going to the more traditional music. Yeah, it's really cool, especially when the vocals are starting to play for the song, really getting you in the mood for this battle. Throughout the fight, I started to really understand what the song was about, because as I was playing the game, I didn't quite see how it fit. With the song playing here, now I really understood. It is a song about fighting for hope despite being overwhelmed, and as the player continues the fight, they become more and more overwhelmed. And this fits perfectly because this song talks about how the player or anyone can't do it alone. The battle can feel endless, the credits keep going, each wave getting a little bit tougher. The fight starts off pretty easy, then difficult but manageable, but only for so long. Eventually, you'll start getting hit, taking damage, and then be destroyed. Here's when the battle starts getting really interesting, though. The message the game gives you asks you if you want to continue or give up, which very traditional for a game like this, but after the second death, the messages start getting a little bit different if you accept defeat. And as the game asks you if you want to continue or not, there are other messages that appear in the background that are encouraging the player to keep fighting. Every death, more of these encouraging messages show up. They are from other players all across the world, and the questions the game is asking start become more pointed. They are asking if the player thinks games are just silly things, or if the player accepts that there is no meaning. Maybe it's just me, but these questions just made me want to fight even more. It wasn't a simple continue or not. It was like challenging me and making me want to yell, yes, I'm going to keep going. I'm going to defeat this thing. Eventually though, you'll die a few more times and you'll get a rescue offer from one of the other people sending you the messages. Once you accept it, other ships will come to surround yours, protecting you and increasing your firepower considerably. Foes that seemed invincible before can be taken down in a couple seconds, and the other ships will take hits for you as well, so you can keep on fighting. And I just love how they added a choir to the music here, making it feel fuller and representing how you're not alone. Eventually, with all the other ships by your side, the credits are defeated, and we see the pods bringing the androids back. While not a fully happy ending, it is a second chance for the characters, a hard fought for one. But then the pods present the player with a choice, to craft their own encouraging message and to be one of the ships that will fly in to help a player who needs it. This seems really cool, but there is a cost to doing so, and the cost is the player's entire save file. There is a lot that this battle and all the choices symbolize. I see it as a message of the importance of other people and how it is impossible to deal with all life throws at you alone. Sure, some people are strong, 
they can deal for a while while others can't, but eventually they too will fail and need help. Whatever the case, everyone needs others to reach their happy ending. And there's a cost to helping others. Whether it is time, energy, some financial cost, or something else, it does not come free. That's what makes the choice at the end so powerful. To help someone here, you have to give up something valuable. The save file of a game where you have unlocked everything. Extra Credits did a great video on this and how the action represents true kindness. It's not just being a hero in a video game because it's fun. No, you're giving up something that you spend a lot of time working for. For me, this was around a 40 hour game and that was being given up here. And yes, you could rationalize why it doesn't make sense too, but that's not the point. Yes, from a logical perspective, it might not make sense to give up your game file. What this is representing is that you are sacrificing something you have worked hard for to help someone you have probably never met. And it begs the question, what type of person are you? Are you someone who will hold to cold logic to keep what is yours because it makes sense? Or are you willing to be someone who will sacrifice for others for something beyond you? And well, that is the type of person I want to be. I remember as I was playing through the game, there are some parts where I got stuck. I wasn't sure what to do. So I looked up some guides online. And through those guides, there is some information about the game as a whole. And there is a mention that a point in the game could cause your save file to be deleted, but not to worry because it would give you plenty of advanced warning. I thought this was rather odd and I wondered why would I ever want to delete my save file? I just avoid that part. At least that's what I thought until I got to that point. Because when I got to it, it was no choice for me at all. And another thing that is really remarkable about this battle is how simple it is from a gameplay perspective. There is nothing new or novel about the fight. It's a shooter as you try to dodge 5,000 million bullets being fired at you. It's been done before, been done for decades. But because it is so simple, it's really able to channel the story and the emotions that the game is trying to get you to feel. I also really like how your defeats are a mechanic here. Typically, the defeats in a game are more of a gameplay thing that is like washed over from a story perspective. You just reset, pretend it doesn't happen. But I really like it when games can make death a mechanic. Use that to further the story in a way that only a game can. So yes, this is a fantastic way to end a fantastic game, and I'm glad I really gave this a try. And my final message to you and to whoever would read it is... Do not avert your eyes from difficulties. Moreover, believe in yourself. Thank you, and I will see you tomorrow.